Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. An unemployment in this country has fallen to levels not seen in 13 years, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, here in Spain at the moment, it seems to be raining jobs. And as we can see from this headline, Spain created 840,700 jobs in 2021, and unemployment falls to 13.33%. Unemployment continues to deliver good news. In 2021, 840,700 jobs were created, and unemployment fell to its lowest level since 2008. Specifically, these new jobs created last year are the best figure since 2005, and it is an increase in employment both by age and by sector. The recovery of the labour market is widespread, said the Secretary of State for the Economy, Gonzalo García Andrés, commenting on the data from the Labour Force Survey, EPA, published on Thursday by the INE, who added that they showed the Spanish economy's capacity for recovery and job creation. This resilience is evident in the creation of 841,000 new jobs, 88% of which are in the private sector. In the last 12 months, 744,300 people have been employed in the private sector and 96,400 in the public sector. So there we go, good news here in Spain when it comes to job creation. And one person who is extremely excited by this data is, you guessed it, the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. And he said yesterday that this is the legislature of employment and it must be the legislature of decent employment. Pedro Sanchez has taken advantage of the EPA data published this Thursday and has assured that the current legislature is the legislature of employment. Furthermore, the president of the government added that it has to be the legislature of decent employment of the significance of our wage and working conditions. For this reason, Sanchez justifies that the Spanish government remains committed to the path of raising the minimum wage until it reaches 60% of the average wage in 2023, which is what the European Council's Charter of Social Rights has recommended. So the Prime Minister there, happy with the employment data, but reiterating that Spain needs to create decent jobs. Now there was a setback for the Spanish government yesterday when the European Court of Justice overturned a controversial Spanish tax. As we can see here, the European Central Court of Justice overturns the Spanish 720 model that requires the declaration of assets abroad. The European Court of Justice has today given the final blow to the Spanish legislation that obliges residents in the country to declare all their assets abroad through the 720 model. The Court of Justice of the European Union concluded this morning that Spain has overstepped the mark in its efforts to combat tax fraud and tax evasion. This legislation goes beyond what is necessary to achieve those objectives, the judgment states. The conditions and penalties contained in the legislation are disproportionate and are likely to discourage the acquisition of assets abroad and thus undermine the movement of capital within the EU as they do not apply to those located on national territory. So the European Court of Justice stepping in and overturning that controversial 720 tax. And the funny thing here is that the minister who set up this 720 tax model when he left politics set up a law firm that specialised in this type of tax Go figure. Now Spain's lovely Cabo de Gata area in the province of Almeria is making headlines today as a controversial hotel project in Spain's Cabo de Gata Natural Park gets new push. Controversial hotel project in Spain's Cabo de Gata Nija Natural Park in the southeastern province of Almeria is one step closer to going ahead. The project aims to transform a rundown cortijo, a farmstead typical of southern Spain, into a 30-room hotel with 70 parking spaces in the heart of the projected ecosystem. Consisting of several buildings that were formerly used as a rope factory and a farm, the hotel would stand about 900 metres from Los Genoveses Beach, one of the best preserved environmental gems in the Andalusia region. The Regional Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Sustainable Development Department has granted unified environmental authorization to a project that aims to renovate the old Las Chiqueras Cortijo. So it looks as though that environmental wonder down there in Almeria in the heart of a national park is going to get a hotel. And it's a shame because one of the best things about that area is that there aren't any hotels. Now an update on the health crisis here in Spain and there's some good news as far as restrictions are concerned. Because as we can see here, autonomous communities begin to remove restrictions as incidence rates fall. The sixth wave of coronavirus driven by the Omicron variant is still keeping incidence at record levels and ICUs at high risk. 
However, encouraged by the downward curve in recent days, more and more communities are opting to lift the restrictions they adopted in the face of the brutal explosion of cases, although some will still prolong some of their measures. On Friday, the 28th of January, Catalonia, which lifted the curfew last week, will remove the COVID passport, the limitation of social gatherings to 10 people, and the capacity restrictions, although it will keep nightlife closed. Asturias goes further. In addition to eliminating the vaccination certificate for access to premises, it reopens the interior of pubs and discos. Both regions join Cantabria, which last week removed the COVID certificate. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain, and we can see that falling incidence rate now sitting at 3,139. Hospital pressure has dropped down to high and is sitting at 14.9%. There are 18,548 COVID patients hospitalised around the country, and ICU pressure remains high at 22.2%, with 2,099 COVID patients unfortunately still in ICU. Now, we saw last week how the tourism industry here in Spain is excited about its prospects in 2022. The sector is confident that this year is going to be a good year, and that British tourism in the country will pick up. However, that might not be the case, because as we can see from this headline from The Telegraph, with Spain and France locking out British families, it's time to look east. They can be oily-skinned, sulky, intermittently selfish, but the way some countries are treating our teenagers feels rather unfair. With the UK dropping testing requirements from February the 11th, now is the moment to start looking at our holiday options for the year ahead. But while combing the rules, families with young teenagers will notice that there are some glaring omissions from their viable holiday map, with our favourite holiday destinations of France, Spain and Italy making things either impossible or very difficult for unjabbed teenagers. Let's take Spain, the UK's favourite holiday destination. It currently classifies Britain as high risk, meaning that those aged 12 and above can only enter the country if they are fully vaccinated, two doses, or including a booster if more than 270 days since the last dose, with no acceptable alternatives like a negative PCR test result or proof of recovery, as many countries permit. So there we go. According to The Telegraph, Spain and France locking out British families, as it's either impossible or very difficult for unjabbed teenagers to visit. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Paul, be they true or false, any criticism regarding the disimbursement of EU recovery funding will quickly be ignored or brushed under the carpet. The last thing Brussels wants is doubt as to how the billions of taxpayers' euro are being used or accounted for. Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment, and this is a story that has been quite prominent in the press here in Spain in recent times. Opposition parties in this country accusing the government of not spending EU funds correctly. But we saw the other day that the European Commission said that that was not the case, and the Spanish government is spending the money well. So basically, it's a question of who do you believe? opposition parties here in Spain, or the government and the European Commission. And I'd probably agree with you there when you say that the last thing Brussels wants is any doubt cast on how this money is spent. Because the last thing a lot of Northern Europeans want is for that European aid money to be wasted, which unfortunately has happened in the past. One here from Ex Coco. Hi Stuart, have you seen or heard of the band Broken Peach? One of the best things to come out of Spain. Pete from South Wales. Yeah, Pete, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, I had not heard of the band Broken Peach until I saw your comment, clicked on the link and checked them out. And they're not bad for a cover band. I'm always looking for decent music to listen to here in Spain. Basically anything that's not reggaeton. One here from Kim. I wonder how Britain is viewed in terms of corruption at this current moment in time. Yeah, Kim, thanks for the comment. And obviously referring to something that we saw the other day about Spaniards' perception of corruption in this country, and apparently it's getting worse. And to give you an idea on how some other countries did on this index and how they compare with Spain, let's have a look. And as we can see, Denmark is on top with a score of 88 points. People there obviously don't feel that corruption is a problem. Finland second, New Zealand, Norway, Singapore, Sweden, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Germany, and 78, the United Kingdom. Spain comes in with a point score of 61. And if we go down to the other end of the scale, countries where there is a problem with corruption, we can see places like Libya, Afghanistan, North Korea, Yemen, Venezuela, Somalia, Syria, and South Sudan. So I hope that gives you an idea of how corruption is perceived in the United Kingdom. One here from Eve Hoover. Is there any sizable push against the vaccine in Spain? Yeah, thanks for the comment. And the simple answer to your question is no, there is no sizable push against COVID-19 vaccines in this country. And the reason Spain doesn't have as many clown politicians as some other countries, 
not mentioning any countries by name, but you know which ones I'm talking about, that decided to politicize this health crisis from the beginning. People here in Spain understood the magnitude of the health crisis and they did what they had to do. But realistically speaking, is there a sizable push against vaccines in any country or is it a vocal minority? That's the question. One here from Ken, I agree with you, Stuart. Jared McGrath should put some flesh on the bones of his comment. I returned back to the UK two and a half years ago and would return to Spain tomorrow if personal family circumstances allowed. Yeah, Ken, thanks for the comment. And in reply to a comment that we saw the other day from the person that you mentioned in your comment, who was not happy with his life here in Spain. Can't remember exactly what he said, but it was along the lines that Brits are treated like absolute shite in this country. And I, like you, would love to know what his grievances are, but he hasn't replied yet. And finally, one here from Mike. I paid €17.94 for a bottle of gas in Malaga three days ago. Yeah, Mike, thanks for the comment. Seventeen ninety four for a bottle of gas down there in Malaga. That's a bargain in my opinion, because I paid over €30 Euros for the same size bottle in Portugal when I was there recently. So if you think Spain's expensive, try Portugal. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.